the week they get Sit back, relax, we got the brain of Ben No need to stress in the house, it's Van Bellen The game is when surfing, you can't yell them or tell them We get the news, the views, the win biz The brand's gear tips, plus the world's best quiz The cops, PWA We're professionals without the pay There's nothing in pole dancing that we won't chat From tandem boards to a windsurfing cat It's your one-stop shop for a laugh and listen Tune in each week or you'll be doing the missing You know, the problem with that intro, Benny, is it already takes 40 seconds and we're trying to make them shorter, isn't it? So I'm probably going to have to cut that down. Um, <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. The the official windsurfing TV was yesterday, obviously. If you saw the live stream from Chile, it was like somebody was shining down and went, you know what, the semifinals, we need to get some bigger waves. It did, did. If you watched it, you will know the women's semi final kicked off and it just went turbo like <laughs> massed and a bit, it looked like. And the women's eye, oh, it looked crazy. It was such good timing, you couldn't have wrote the script mm. any better. It was yeah. pretty epic. If you did watch it, uh, let me just show you this clip. Hit for Brasino as Morgan takes aim. Fully down the line. Morgan with the 360. Does he land it? Oh. Is it a pit? Morgan Waro with the 360. Bam. Just to give you an idea. It wasn't one of the biggest waves. That was, that was so sick. That was so sick, that moment. Yeah, it was actually – um it was a good, great moment for windsurfing and wave sailing, wasn't it? Because at some points I was watching the live stream or, you know, I, I was asleep so when I watched yeah. the replays, but – um, I was looking at some like well over mast high sets rolling through and just people shredding them. And I was like, this is pretty sick. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, I watch a bit of WSL surfing and you very rarely get conditions like that on a surfing tour, let alone wave sailing. So huge yeah. congratulations to everybody yeah. involved. I think it's a big moment, another big moment for windsurfing. Very positive. Well just for yeah. people who are in here just to find out the rough bones you've probably already looked but like i said got through to the finals yesterday in the men and the women the women stepped up a lot of new names mm -hmm. in those top spots you know we haven't seen the morenos there this year there's other riders that you know drifted out and it's opened the door for these young up-and-coming rippers and they did not let us down um, winning the event though not one of the youngest rippers out there she's kind of been teetering on those finals for a few years i had her in my fantasy windsurfing team because she has got an aggressive attitude she really goes for it she has been working it and it's kind of been coming i've been seeing it i actually tipped her yesterday you did benny you did nina urban <laughs> thing took home the victory but on her last wave it was the last bit of the heat that she took the victory because until then, the young ripper that is Alexia Kiefer, again, another young ripper who has been, you know, Pozo local and everyone kind of thinks, oh, the guys in Pozo, the girls in Pozo, it's all about jumping. These, I mean, she has been bashing out some of the sickest wave rides in the more cross source section of Pozo for years. Everyone's been tipping her. And it's so good to see her over there in Chile. Unfortunately, didn't win the event, but still second place. That is absolutely epic. And then mm -hmm. third place, we've got 14-year-old Sol de Greek, who has absolutely been lighting up the place. Again, we're going to go through the highlights in a minute, but she was just all over it every wave. And then we've also got fourth rider who made the final had such a disappointing end to a season last year went over to Maui for the first time I saw her first post she was so excited to be there we're obviously talking about Pauline Katz and she broke a leg you know and didn't get to sail the lower classic oh, and now yeah. she's had to come back she's been going through the rehab doing a lot of stuff with Dida she's another Pozo local pretty much now Swiss rider and she was in that final so epic stuff like and and it was turbo size it was it was really good and they all gave a great account of themselves i think anyone watching i think you could be convinced that it looks easy i know mm -hmm. speaking to everyone there and you know for the for the guys that are more into it you can tell it's not easy low tide as well earlier on it was, oh man it was just crazy so that was so good that was the women 
Um, we're going to go through the highlights. Paul, what's your take on that? I mean, it was when you watched it back. Well, uh, yeah, like I said, I haven't actually watched the whole thing because it goes for quite a few hours and the time difference made it a bit tricky here today. But from what I did see, I was very, very impressed with how everybody handled the conditions. It was pretty mega at times. It was heavy, waves were draining, um, heavy closeout sections, but it was just such a sick event in the end. It was yeah. actually quite a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. Yesterday we were talking about it. I did look at the forecast and it said towards the end it was picking up a bit, but I didn't realize it was going to get quite to that size. Um, it's really weird though because the early rounds were quite small and I was like, oh, mm. man, it's such a shame. And okay. literally it was like somebody went, all right, the semis are on. Okay, well, hit the switch. And it was like, boom. <laughs> Okay, nowhere. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's, it's... you heard the interview with Lena Erpenstein. Sorry, you know, the Lena Erpenstein interview. She said she was watching, she goes, It didn't look that big. So I went out there and I was like, Wow, it didn't look this big from the beach. And, it, yeah. and then she got in from that, obviously, semi and looked out for the men's. And she's like, Oh, it's got bigger, but it actually got bigger literally when she was on the water. So it was mm. like she said, It just yeah. came up around her. Mad. Amazing, isn't it? How quickly that swell came up. But uh, no, just it was an excellent event. The live stream actually was wasn't perfect, but geez, it was a huge um, improvement over uh, Japan and other events that we've had over the last few years. So that was awesome to see. Yeah, um, yeah I don't know. It just the I don't know. Just the vibe that I got through it all was just very positive. People were pretty pumped up, and yeah, it's hopefully this. Uh, um, uh, momentum continues throughout the year because uh, that was a pretty sick event. That's sick event. That's what we do. We're going to go into more of this sort of stuff. We're going to count, count try and talking about the actual results and stuff for a bit. But yeah, uh, I think definitely this event hopefully is on the tour for a good time. And hearing all the local riders talk about it, they seem super motivated. They're so glad that their spot has been like showcased to the world like this. Mm. And, you know, and the riders delivered. Obviously, we got to talk about the men because we were talking about Kamiju Ban yesterday, high boom. I saw him in the smaller stuff and I was thinking, oh, he's maybe not, he's got it, he needs to get it together. And then suddenly it went turbo size and he just went turbo. Oh. <laughs> it was, and to be honest, I looked at the final results. You know, there's been a few heats throughout the competition where I thought, hmm, there's a bit overscore, there's a bit underscore. Well, that could have gone a different way. But in the final, for me, it finished as it. I didn't have any complaints with the way it went down in the end. Um, we've got to give a shout out. So you can meet Juban, if you don't already know, won that. He has a has a way of, you don't really see him around, the, the, you know, like doing any videos. He, he always does quality projects when he does them, but he's not bashing out social media all the time. And he suddenly just turns up to the big events, Cape Verde, Maui, you know, a lower classic, and mm. just does the business. Mm. And like I said, he had some of the sickest aerials yesterday, some of the biggest waves, uh, really impressive performance. And another one who impressed me, Morgan Nuro. This mm. is a Maui local on his wrong tack. You know, I, I saw his, his his social media stuff when he was in Peru saying, oh, I'm working on my goiters. I've been working on this. And and then you see him in this competition. He's bashing out goiters. He bashed out that 360. Like, what if we got to show it again. Yeah, this was the sickest move for me in the competition. Fully down the line. Morgan with the 360. Does he land it? Oh, it that was insane. That was so good. <laughs> for the perfect. I tell you what, though, when you watch it back, and I've talked about this, Mark Parry might be coming on in a minute, but I talked about it because we were watching it. I was speaking to him on the phone and stuff. He claims it as he lands, which means he misses the best bit of the, you know, the other bit of the wave. It's, I thought you could have given him a 10 for that maneuver, that 360. This was in the semi finals. So it's a 360 vert, like right in the section, lands perfectly. And for me, I could give him straight 10. It doesn't matter because you can always say, oh, he really could have gone down the way. He could have done there. We all could have done this. And I, I kind of stick with that. But also when you watch it back now, you see him claim it. And then you see how long that wave stands up for afterwards. And you're like, if you really had have been on your game, he would have made the whole wave. I'm sure he would have. And then it would have mm. been the 20s. Because, you know, that was the sickest move, the most critical. That was... It was perfect. Like that was that. amazing. That was amazing. I'd love to see that move with a closer camera angle in slow mo. That'd be so good. But yeah, that was incredible. Just the height he got, and just so um, 
watch it again. You just so you got under it. Yeah, let's watch it about 10 times. I mean, anyway, I'm going to turn the commentary down, but I, I like the commentary as well because it does add to the, the atmosphere. But look at this. This is a proper bowl, upper section. You know, he's got the rest of the wave to go. So if he crashes there, he wastes that whole wave. So, you know, that's – and it's early on in the heat. This could even be his first wave looking at the scores. You know, so this is when it really counts. When you do the manoeuvre, just for people watching at home in case they don't understand, if you do your manoeuvre at the end of the wave, on the end section, you're not risking the whole wave. If you do your move at the beginning wave, or even if you've had a couple of good turns and then you do your manoeuvre and then you still go, this is the ultimate because you are risking everything for this manoeuvre. If you do it at the end... Yes, it's a good way to finish a ride, but there's less consequences. We saw people scoring good scores when they crashed their last move because they'd already put in a good score. So this way of doing it is really the money. And if you watch when he lands this, he claims it. He, you watch how long that wave stands up for. Still, I still think it's a 10. I still would have given him straight 10. Look at that. That is just bad. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You couldn't have. It's crazy. It's so good. Yeah. Um, he goes, oh shit, it's still open. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. It's it ran away from him. Like, look, uh, it holds. It holds. It's holding. Oh, but still. That's wow. sick, yeah. It's so good, isn't it? It's amazing. It's amazing to see. And to do that just in a in a heat, in a competition, you know. I mean um, I'm yeah. just gonna go through the comments just because I need to address this. Um up the resolution. Okay, we are dealing with um, what we're dealing with. We have not got inroads to the proper full, uh, you know, quality highlights. We've had to download the live stream for whatever quality we can get. And then we're just mashing this together. So is it perfect? No. Would we like to do better? Yes. Can we? No. <laughs> so this is what we've got. I apologize. It's not going to be great. It's literally just ripped straight off YouTube, this. Well, this is as good as it was live streams, wasn't it? Yeah, this is just uh, the resolution. Yeah, no in the Facebook. comments, as uh, probably um, the best Portac 360 I've seen. I mean, it was. And in a competition, mm -hmm. in a moment where you need it, you know. And I was saying, obviously, I wasn't doing the commentary last night, but I'm, when I'm watching it, I'm a commentator. And I'm like, you know, someone is going to have to step it up. Because at the moment, it's who picks the best wave because they all ride sick. So someone has to go above turns and kind of straight airs. Someone's got to do something critical. And Morgan was the guy to step it up. I'm also going to give a shout out before we get into this is to Toon. I thought he was risking it all. It didn't pay off for him. And that is why I like watching to Toon Antoine Martin sail. Because when he goes, he pushes hard. When he makes it, he destroys it. But when he doesn't, he fails. He destroys himself. Yeah, but it's good to watch Toon's <laughs> turn. You know, he's really... Oh, that was a good turn. Far out. It out, like, with everything. That was you sick. Know, that's, like, what you really want to see. But the problem is with doing this, the risk to reward, from what I saw from the judges, wasn't really it, because that's the risk. Bang. And, you know, and he, he was hitting the proper, mm. you know, the sections. Not that everyone else wasn't, but he was going for it, and it... It oh, you know, I haven't, seen, I haven't actually seen. I haven't actually seen this heat yet, so, yeah, so um, I just put a few of them yeah. in just to give you an idea. For the guys listening audio only, I'm sorry, but there is going to be quite a few videos in this. So that's the excitement. Uh, we've obviously got to talk about the other finalists. Morgan finished second, as I said, and it was a it was a close call, but can be definitely uh, third. Victor Fernandez, fourth. Philip Costa. I thought Victor looked very good in the smaller stuff and super solid. Uh, again, I was speaking to Paré before this all happened, and I'm like, and I, I thought the same for Brasinho. I didn't think he had the wow factor, but he just looked very, very solid. Um, and then they didn't quite get it together towards the end. Victor just looked solid. He looked just like he's going to be difficult to beat because he would always throw down the score. He had a few goiters in there, solid wave rides, just always doing the business. If you went like Tatoon did, you know, Victor's through, you know, and he was putting in some solid scores. In the final, you you needed that wow extra factor. And Victor just missed that little bit of the, the bigger waves and the, the, the key moments. So uh, mm -hmm. still, I think Victor might be 
Well, he's definitely in the top three. I did some quick calculations literally before we went online. I think in the men, Brazilio still might be leading the world tour level points with uh, Morgan Leroux. Mm. I'd have to confirm that, but I think they've got 16.15 each. If I look at the uh, the the uh, Japan result and do the same maths, maybe someone can check that for me, uh, which would mean Victor's in, in third place. So it so, could be Brasinho and Morgan level at the top, but maybe Brasinho is leading because he's won an event with a first and a fifth because you get way more points for first. Oh, no, he didn't finish first in Japan. Take it back. Morgan's leading the World Tour because um, Brasinho finished obviously second in because Burnt won in, um, in sorry, in Japan. Um, apologies. Mm. Confusing, confusing thing. Yep. No, I'm just looking at PWA website. Obviously, hasn't been updated yet. So yeah, that's gonna be very interesting to see how all that changes. God, Morgan's had a good start to the year, then hasn't he? Uh, fourth, ripping. Uh, yeah. Yeah, ripping. I mean, you think Maui's and coming? Victor. You know, you know, maybe Fiji if that all happens like it did last year. You know, obviously he's been practicing for Pozo. He's been getting better, but it's not going to be his event. You know, I'm not expecting Morgan as much as he's a great sailor. I'm not expecting him in that top top few in Pozo. It's a very specialist, like a lot of the guys that are pushing for that. But, uh, you know, looking at how much he's improved, I'm like, well, maybe maybe he is a, a, a good shout. He definitely started his doubles and all that. So why not, in fact? Why not? What am I on about? Why not? The guy has got some serious skills. Picks out waves, just always on good waves. Camille as well, always on good waves. Just insane, insane. So there we go. I mean, we did have a plan for this podcast. It's totally gone out the window because I'm just because <laughs> I'm <laughs> so excited. When I start talking about the heats, I'm like, oh my god. Um, oh, this is right. Uh, just, can, we, can we just warn everyone? This is not going to be a 25 minute podcast. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> this is not. We've just done the finals. You know, there's so much to talk about. We're going to go through the comments as well. So get in the comments. Give us your give us your feedback because no. for me that was one of the all time you know great competitions. Like and and this is what a lot of the guys have been pushing for. We know there's probably less prize money. We know certain standards have been dropped. But the reason they are allowed to drop those standards is because the sailing is epic. Because the venue is epic. Because this is what we need. This is what motivates people. This is what people want to watch. And I think, you know, I'm so glad they got the forecast to showcase it because a lot of people have sacrificed stuff to make these events happen. You know, whether it's the organizers, whether it's the IWT, you know, all putting it all together behind the scenes with the local organizers and the riders. You know, it's expensive places to get to from all around the world. So we but we've got so much out of this competition. We've got the locals pushing through who, you know, gave a really good account of themselves. Alex Vargas, definitely one of them. He really took it. To the guys you know and on a different day we could have seen him in the final we really could have so that is just so good to see you know people sailing in port tack down the line no jumping opens the door for other things to come out you know as soon as you add a jump in the usual suspects are in the mix not that that's a bad thing but it's different and i love it i absolutely love it watching yesterday i think someone said they got goosebumps when the women's heat started i did I was watching there and I was watching them coming up looking, oh, don't hit that. And I'm like, what do you want about? Hit it. And then I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> so it was, it, was pretty, it was pretty cool to watch, I have to say. And I was watching with a non-windsurfer. And in the earlier rounds, when it was super float and ride, smaller, not much happening. She's like, I much prefer watching the race and this is boring. But then as that wave pumped up, as action started happening, you know, the whole sort of uh, – atmosphere changed which was which was really cool really cool definitely shall we um shall we get into the some of the heats what do you think uh, yes let's do it we're not going to go through every heat because no. it, it's impossible we're going to have a what a scan through the the semis and the finals there were a few quarter final yep. heats. i've got a few highlights from them just i took from the ends of the video just to set the scene a little bit and maybe shout out a few people but we start with uh, the women because this is when it went is turbo. The, the, this is when the waves just went. Yeah, this is it. Yep. This is it. So just bear I mean, with me here. Just to set the scene on this, you're watching the TV. It, there's been okay waves. And the girls went out, and just as they're waiting to start the heat, the set of all sets was it literally like mountains just rose up. And you could see all the girls going, 
Uh, and Lena was on wave. She was like, I, she didn't want to get off it, but she was too early for the heat. Drifted back. And I heard her say it in the interview as well. And you could see it, you know, live. And she drifted back thinking, oh, that's it. I've missed those good waves. And then they just kept coming. <laughs> it was like, it was epic. So, yeah, so this was semi-final number one. So you can obviously see what the results were. Or actually, if you can't see because you're listening, Lena Erpenstein wins the heat. Sol Dietrich, Dietrich, Dietrich. second to Greek, sorry. Um, Justina Sniadi, who I'd picked to get into the final, she came third and exited, and Coco Favo came fourth. So we've picked out here the – oh, is it working? Why isn't it playing? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Hold on a second, everybody. I do have the video here, but uh, it doesn't seem to like it. Let me. You just can probably just add thing. it, add it in the bottom where, just add the whole video. It doesn't take long. Go to present. present. Yeah, and then video file and just add it. Oh, I see. Sorry, Beauty guys. Live TV guys. Like I said, we have been scratching around this morning trying to just get these highlights and download them off YouTube so it isn't going to be seamless. So I'll, I'll tell you now. Uh, here we go. This is easier. Okay, cool. So that's the results. And then we've, it goes into some of the waves. Should be coming up very shortly. Sorry, a bit hard to... Salt de Greek. Oh. Again. De Greek is on. Can she hang on? She's fully powered. She's on a big wave. Draws her bottom turn. Really pulling this line. Yeah, it's like, I mean, Sol looked really, uh, really comfortable out there. You know, she's a 14-year-old. Let's not, let's not be around the bush. She's a kid. She's 14 years old. Mm, no, it's crazy. Good turns. She, she, she's got a good, uh, good technique. Man, she was ripping it. She was picking yeah. off big waves and, you know, going for the hit at the end. Oh, like getting back in, but really going for it. It was it was really impressive to see. What's she going to be like in her 20s? Yeah. That's gonna... ah, so the first wave, you haven't got the first waves. Um, well, I picked up what I could. Yeah, okay, okay sorry, sorry. Yeah, I think um, some of the cameras weren't always on the action and I just – didn't put anything. Yeah, no, right. Bring. Just the beginning of the heat. There was just mountains. I, I just. Oh, okay. Yeah, for some reason. Yeah, this I've... was this was kind of when it turned on, and then they just the waves just kept coming, um, as we'll see as we go through. But yeah, there was some. There was some. There was some great rides, and like I said, I there was no problems. You know, again, everyone judging is is. Um, it's subjective, you know, like it, 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 it's people have got different opinions and how they judge and what they like. So it, it is always not I don't want to say controversial, but everyone's going to have different opinions, especially when it's close. And that's OK. There's no problem with that. You know, it's not that the judges got it wrong or you think the judge got it wrong. I think they got it right. Everyone has got their own opinion. That's that is judging. They're judging what they think. So. There is no sort of right or wrong answers. There's just opinions. So I think, you know, for me, my opinion, I thought this heat was was pretty clear cut uh, in the end. Uh, I thought Shani had some good rides, but it felt like she wasn't taking the bigger waves or didn't have that. And, you know, when it goes sort of turbo and the waves do pick up, you've got to capitalise on the size. You know, that's that's part of it. Um, and I think, I think Sol, Sol really impressed me, I have to say. I thought... She just took the bull by the horns in this heat, and she was not backing down. I mean, these are not small waves, and there's there is a lot of water there. You know, a lot of water. It's it's heavy. Um, again, you've got to have confidence. But they look like they were holding up. But I'm sure when you're out there, you're not always knowing it's going to hold up because some of those inside ones were just crunching. You know, the backwash from when the wave crashed down was higher than the mass, so there was like mast high sort of. Uh, bombing white water just exploding which was mm. which was crazy <laughs> yeah. there was i mean especially in the later ones there was some which you thought oh my god you wouldn't want to be under that it was uh it was pretty hectic you know and oh. the, 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 that that's mass high explosion 
you know, and that's yep. one of the smaller ones, weirdly. <laughs> so you're like, wow. Um, and you can't see it because we're looking straight on. The wave won't look as hardcore as it is. Like that, it looks hardcore. That's you imagine being where Justina was there. That would look even more hardcore. That that wave, did you see the angle of that wave coming in? It was almost coming at right angles to the other one. It was, yeah, it's tricky. Geez, Lena got a good uh, total heat score, didn't she? Almost at 15 points. That's uh, super high. Yeah. Yeah, that was solid, real solid. Um, yeah, and I think, like I said, for me, my opinion here watching the TV, no problems with those two going through. I thought they deserved it, and they pretty much smashed it. It, was, it wasn't even, for me, it wasn't close. It was like, yeah, Lena and Stolz in the final, done, dusted. You know, it's still good performance from the other two girls because that that those conditions changed very quickly, which is always difficult to, you know, uh, get your head around. You know, you're ready for what was before, like almost head high, straight into mast high. It's, it was a, a big change. And then, yep. yeah, second semi-final. Was, okay, uh, let's get into that one. Sorry, um, I'm doing video file, and I sorry coming, it's all coming, and here it is. Oops, oh, hold on, that's heat one. Where is it? Yeah, don't worry, I had the same problem yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> here we are, heat two. Alexia Oops, actually, sorry, I'll just go back just so we can introduce. So for this one, semi-final heat two, uh, I'm not great with all the names. Alexia Kiefer Quintana. Yeah, yeah Alexia Kiefer. Like I said, Pozo local, and she stood out. Like, when I, as soon as I saw her sailing yesterday or last night, I was like, she could win this. She just looked on, like, she looked on. Her mm -hmm. turn was so complete, like, aggressive, and that's the difference, you know, I, Again, looking back over the years, that's usually the difference in the women's feet. The ones that are just a bit more aggressive, it just looks way more radical, you know. And, and again, you see it in the men on different levels. But I think Alexia, her wave riding is on like this next level. I think Alina, Alina Erpenstein as well, they've got a very aggressive like tail throw kind of like really puts it out there. I think that for me, as if like if I'm watching, I like that. Like it's it's a personal thing, you know. Some people might like other styles or whatever. I thought a uh, soul going back to he had loads of flow, like really good speed. You know, was reading the wave well, and I think over the years we'll see her get more burnt and more aggressive. You know, oh, but, um, she's improved even in the yeah. last when I saw met her in the first time in June, which is less than a year ago. I, I'm when I look at her sailing now, it's like she's improved heaps yeah. in nine ten months. So. And the thing is, there'll be people around the world that really probably doesn't don't don't know Alexia Kiefer. She went to Peru last year and she was just going off, but she went a bit too off because she hit the lip super late, was super light wind. She could have won that event. You know, you really could see it. She didn't end up there, but you, there was the potential was there. When you see her in Pozo riding like this upwind, like not even head high, but she is tearing the shit out of it. Like I'm not joking. She is throwing tail. She is just like absolutely giving it loads. So really good to see her on the podium. And that's a massive moment. You know, obviously this is a semi-final, but she just demolished it. It was not even a fair contest almost. Like 15 points in this, 7-7-7 seven, seven, seven to kick off the heat, 7-2-3, seven, 7-3-3. Three, seven, three, three. I mean, it wasn't luck. She wasn't just picking up one wave. She was just, just destroying them all. And a six mm. nine at the end, just for like, yeah, well, I'll just do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I guess it was more of a uh, a case of uh, battle for second place. So Pauline Katz came second with 12 30, 12.3, sorry. Yeah. And Jane Seaman, the WA Port Tax Specialist, just missed out with 11.33. Yeah. And Maria Behrens with a 10. So it was yeah, solid. It was, it was solid, yeah, but um, just from while I watched it, just because I know you have had a quick sound through, but Pauline, I thought she looked good as well. Pauline's been putting in the work over the last couple of years, like I say, coming back from injury, and she looked on it as well. She's been over in Cape Town. She's been over in Australia. She's been, you know, she lives most of the time in Pozo now, working remotely, uh, and she really looked good as well, I have to say. I'm going to bring Mark Paré in as well, because it looks like he's oh, just... Oh, awesome. Great. Um, hey Mark. How are you guys? Hey mate. 
Uh, just reviewing second semi-finals from the women. Then we're going to go on to the men. Um, oh, how's the how's? I mean, I know you know Alexia and this. What do you what are you making of her style turns? I think she's got probably the best turns out of the ghost fleet at the moment. Like I, I've been seeing uh, some stuff that she posted on Insta on yeah on Instagram, and uh, she did like one hell turn in pose. I was like, that's fucking sick. You know, yeah. like she just went blew the tail around. And just caught it on the way down while the wave was exploding. That's super hard to do. So yeah, yeah, no, yeah she's got uh, a super aggressive style. Like she yeah. doesn't hold back off that top. She's just yeah. pushing. Love it. Did you did did you manage to uh, watch the, the live stream, Mark? Or I did. I did. Yeah, I almost had a heart attack. I was. Uh... <laughs> There was a very sad picture of you with your foot up uh, in your in your cast watching yeah. the TV. I felt like shedding a tear. I mean, I was speaking to you as well, but it yeah. still made me like when I saw the picture. I was thinking, I've been there when I did my foot. And it's like it's pretty miserable. Mate, oh, man, the this, conditions. Look at this set. Just sick, you know. I, I almost had a freaking anxiety attack. Honestly. Oh no. Yeah, I. You know, it's just Chile is one of my favorite places on earth to sail you know if not mm. my favorite one so it yeah it, it hurts my my heart to see it going off like this and you know and i've spent some time there so i i really enjoy sailing matanza so yeah it's uh it's hard it's a hard pill to swallow for me to have to have to watch it from home and not be able to compete and you know be fighting for what i want so but yeah no. you know things happen so yeah, I'm glad at least that you know, it seemed like the organization was on point and the yeah. conditions were firing. So I think that's a super positive uh, thing for the future and for the band to happen again. You know, every everyone seems super, super, super mm. happy. So, yeah, yeah. Plus, we're probably going to buy some insurance from that dog and maybe a Peugeot truck because I actually thought the adverts were were, were good. You know, maybe uh, I didn't like it when they run over the beginning of the next heat. That looked like my pet hate but yeah um, in terms of the adverts i thought they work well like yeah. like it, i really know that Peugeot have a truck now yeah <laughs> and if yeah. i can understand spanish maybe the dog would sell me some insurance <laughs> <laughs> it was gas gas was it? there you go <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know what i'm dog. selling the new windsurfing video is going to have one of those dogs in it i was like i, love it. <laughs> I like the high five <laughs> look at the conditions no, though i, know. I mean, it's Mark, so sick. Mark, you would uh, you would be tearing this apart, wouldn't you, mate? No, I hope. <laughs> you would. But on the plus side, you get to join us here yeah. on this podcast, Mark. You know, it's not all bad. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's cool. But look, it was good, wasn't it? And seeing the um, the end with the people on the beach and you know a lot of happy faces, it was super positive. I was uh, yeah, it's really we... cool. This is so we've gone through the second semi final of the women. Maybe we do go through the, the semi finals of the men now. I was going to just run through to the women's final. What do you want to do? Yeah, Which yeah whatever, want? mate. You can. Uh, I think we'll we mark can... here. And it's interesting because I spoke to Mark before and we were talking, well, we were talking about that 360 from Morgan. So I think we've done semi finals for women. And like I said, they gave a really good account themselves. I think the, the two riders that I thought got through. Ooh. I thought Jane. She needed oh, that. Did you oh, see that? that? Sorry, oh. how was that wave? Did you see that? <laughs> Just Crazy, spitting at the end. He was full barreling at some point. Yeah. Look, look down here, down the end of that wave. It just, it's just crazy. It's like fully square. Just a full bit. Ridiculous. Yeah. She's Alexia. She really dominated the heat, didn't she? Wow. She just has a very powerful style. Like you can see, she's committed all the time. Yeah, and it's yeah. not easy when it's that big as well. You know, uh, you know, when it's smaller, she's even more aggressive. I think yeah. she has to hold back a bit. You can see her going, "Oh, I really want to yeah. smack it." But so she's she's already learned that I think from Peru because I saw her go a bit too hard, and that's what ended up on doing it because the lighter winds and the board getting away yeah. from her. But um, like I said, it, she is going to be a massive. She's a force now, as we've already seen, second place here. But uh, yeah. she's not going anywhere. She is. Uh, she's here for a, a fair few years, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens in Pozo with, with her, you know, because she's 
she's got that aggressive style riding as you said you know and that's her strong point but i've seen her i've seen her do back loops as well and and forwards and all this stuff so now yeah. especially with Dida retiring and all the stuff there might has be she retired bit. though has she i'm sure she's gonna be <laughs> going back out i told her laughter the last year so <laughs> is this the retirement so you can then come out of retirement and smash everyone yeah you know? Yeah. it's good to see the young girls coming through i mean yeah. Uh, yeah, but it always so. feels no sorry so i was gonna say when people retire it's always a funny one because i always see this happen it's like you want to retire at the top of your game you want to retire on a high you know you don't want to just just mince out the problem is when you've been doing it for so long and winning for so long you don't just retire at the top because when you retire at the top you there's unfinished business you're like or maybe I yeah. can still win it. And then they always get teased back out. It's it's because they love windsurfing, you know. Yeah. It's like it's, I mean, you can see it with Slater. That that's what he's doing, you know. Yeah. You know, he, yeah, yeah. He, because he, he can't control it. He can't control it. And then, then you're like, well, well, even fifth's not bad. Like I'm still enjoying it, you know. And yeah. then you're like, well, even tenth is pretty good. You know, like, it's really. Good. <laughs> I could have beat that guy. I'm coming back. <laughs> Once you're a windsurf, you're always a windsurfer, Ben. You can't get it out of your system, mate. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Okay, okay, where are we going next? Are we going women's final or men's? Well, uh, what would you like to do, Mark? You can, we can either do the men's semis or the women's final. Do you have a preference? Um, uh, let's, let's finish the women. Let's finish the women. Let's, let's go because um, the, the okay, obviously women. there was two – there was two definite standouts in those semi-finals. I thought, you know, um, Lena Erpenstein in the first one again, another rider which I've been backing for a few years. I think she's got very aggressive style, and Alexia Kiefer. You know, when you watch those two semis, you were like, "Oh, this is going to be a, a good battle." And then you knew Sol and Pauline were going to bring it, but maybe didn't have that kind of aggressive hook which yep. was going to give them that little bit of extra points that's what i thought just going into that final and it pretty mm. much played out i thought like it did and at one point it was looking like alexia kiefer was going to win the competition uh and then lena obviously mm. with that last five, seven two three came through and that just put a uh, a little bit ahead so but yeah. i think a really good battle for all the women I was super impressed with Sol, I have to say. Yeah. She's young and she rides oh. so good. Like she's learned a lot, like compared to last mm. year. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she goes for it. So I think yes. once she grows a little more, you know, and then mm. she gets she gains a little bit more of that of that strength. I think mm -hmm. she's gonna grows a little more. She's already bloody double the size of me. <laughs> she's tall, no, but, but you know what I mean, like in strength. You know, like she's, she's 14 old. years yeah. old. I was thinking yeah. this when I was 14 years old, she would literally have been double my size. She's pretty tall, yeah. tall girl, isn't she? Yeah, she'd, she'd have, to, yeah, she'd have to be oh, the future yeah. world champion at this stage, wouldn't she? I mean, I there's no so. one, no one can touch her in this age bracket. Yeah. Look at that, though. That's like up by the rock, isn't it? I mean, it's interesting. We're going to come on to it in a minute. But when I was speaking to Mark yesterday, he was like, I'm kind of surprised not many people are going for big moves off that early section. And then we'll come on to the men in a minute. But, you know, <laughs> it kind of did play out a bit like that. And it yeah. made me think, oh, Mark will now be thinking, oh, I could have been doing that. But look, there's, some, there's some aggressive turns, isn't there? I mean, yeah. look at that. Yeah, that's it's awesome. It's great, it's great sailing. Proper. You, you wouldn't see out a place, you know, that wouldn't like oh. comparing men and women in this day and age because everyone gets upset, but that wouldn't look out of place in the men's, which, you know, there is years where you kind of think, oh, they're not mm. really pushing hard. That just looks proper, you know, and that's mm. what we want to see. And as soon as you get that level being pushed, everyone pushes up towards it. You know, so it's, it's like that everywhere you go. If you're sailing at your local beach and some hot shot starts riding or a young gun starts pushing, everyone's level raises. It's like it, the level goes up to whatever it is. So, and I think with all these young girls pushing now, the level will only just be going up. Definitely. The riding was sick from the final. It was really good. Yeah. That is and so at the end, towards the end, I saw Paulina as well get like a 
hell with. Yes, really yeah. I thought yeah. she grew during that competition. Yeah. Like I yeah. really thought her turns just got better and better. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, you could see in, in the wave before, like he fully committed to the rail. I really like that yeah. first time. It was sick. Yeah. She, she's she's wife coming through. She's Sorry. definitely been, Pauline's been one I've been watching like over the last years. And she is one of the ones I can see has got that focus, that steely focus. She's putting in the work. She's going to the places around the world. She's got a plan and she is just executing. Like I said, I was so, I felt really sorry for her when she broke her leg, obviously in Maui, because that stopped that whole momentum thing. But, you know, sometimes those injuries can be weirdly good for you like you come back stronger you have even more focus and you know you're more determined um but yeah it was, it was good to see that god the conditions is firing it's so so great how how often is it how often is it this is it like this mark this big not often no, no. i think they were kind of lucky i Personally, that big, I've never sailed it. I've yeah, sailed okay. it fast, fast high and like fully barreling, but not, not that big. Not I, that I big. actually thought it was going to be unsaleable. There was when they started coming through, I thought, oh, we might just get that hell like inside, but it kind of held it pretty well. I was, I was yeah, kind of surprised. Yeah, I think it's just because then it starts breaking like out of that point towards the rock, you know, and then it just lines up even more in a way but you could see that the bigger bigger ones then they had too much water in them you know yeah. like the one for example that Kami got in the final well we're gonna see it yeah. now but yeah, yeah. Like you could see that he then it was like kind of bending away like that instead of wrapping in yeah so then it was even kind of more onshore and it was more shouldery so it was hard to ride yeah, the, more. the lip got a bit softer down that bottom end didn't it it's yeah. It was kind of interesting. And this looked like there was a lot of water moving as you went down the break. Yeah, I'm guessing yeah, yeah. I haven't been there, but I'm guessing that water's got to go out somewhere. And it yeah. felt like towards the end of that wave, that was where it was kind of mm. channeling. So it looked like it was quite a bumpy old affair towards the end. Yeah. That end so, section yeah. looks pretty gnarly, doesn't it? It's really it's pretty, oh, yeah. Pretty, yeah. It, it's yeah, it's a little bit mean, like it curls in weird ways sometimes. Mm. Which is so yeah. that was it. That was the women. Lena Erpenstein winning her first ever World Cup. She says making her first ever final, but obviously there's four riders in this final. She's been in the top four before, but with riding only, it is a different format. So you have all four riders. It's I've been in these situations before because we've spelled a lot like this in the UK. And being fourth is a really great, but it's bloody annoying because you're like, you're the only one who's not on the podium. <laughs> it's like, yeah. So I know Pauline will be super happy to get there. But when you look at the points, you're like, oh, there's only half a point in it. You know, and you always feel like that. But congratulations to Pauline fourth, Sol de Greek, 14 years old, already on her World Cup podium. That's epic. That is epic. And in some epic conditions. Alexia Kiefer, and we're sure we're going to be seeing her again um, on that podium over the years. Again, we've seen her style. And Lena Erpenstein, her first ever World Cup win. So, yeah, awesome stuff from the girls. Someone else said, like, what I felt yesterday, like I said, you had kind of goosebumps yesterday when those waves picked up. It, it, it really had, like, a moment of, oh, shit, this is, this is, this is real. This is happening. This mm. is happening. Okay, on to the men's men's, men's semi final. So you've got those, right, Benny? Yeah, I we're going to play that clip again because I do like it. Um, bit of a with the three sixty. Does he land it? Oh. Is it a pit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you love this. Brasino as Morgan takes aim, fully down the line. Morgan with the three sixty. Does he land it? Oh. Is it a pit? Morgan uh -huh. with the 360 into the pit at Matanzas. Okay, we've got to start with I this. Love... This, <sighs> this was in the semis. But I think first wave or at first wave before the scores came in. I can't remember. Mark, I know your views on this, but give me your views on this. My views on this, I mean, that was mm. sick. You know, I was actually, I texted Morgan like uh, yeah, to congratulate him and stuff. I was like, I'm happy you did one because I was waiting for someone to finally go for a 360 in the first section. You yeah. know, because it, that's what I remember doing. Like when I was there, I, I used to always hit that first section and I remember it being good for 360s, you know? And uh, so, yeah, I was pretty happy to see Morgan doing one. And uh, you were pretty, not, Okay, let's get it right. You were pretty annoyed that no one was doing them. It's like, why is, yeah. why is no one doing them? <laughs> <laughs> no 
<laughs> yeah. You know, because, okay, let, let's be honest. I was a little annoyed and tired to see everyone just doing straight airs that, down the line, you know? And uh, there was very few guys that were trying something else besides airs. Um, you know, Morgan and uh, Victor were two of them. You know, so, yeah, that really made me happy. And on top of that, it was not only 360. It was like a stomper. It was sick. It was really, yeah. really good. And uh, so, yeah, that was insane. And um, the score... I know I've discussed that with Ben. I, I, we were talking about it last night. Ben, he said that it could have been a 10. I'm saying straight I, 10. Oh. Yeah. I'm saying straight 10, but I know what you're going to say. Carry on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so basically, if you look at when he lands, you know, I think he just, he, he was like uh, amazed, you know, and yeah, he was super, super happy that, that he landed it, you know, so that's why he, he just claimed it. But I feel like if this would have been on a closeout, then it was like straight 10. But the problem is, I feel like he took the time to claim in a way. And then he looked back and then he realized that the wave was still going, you know? Yeah. So my view is, you know, if he would have just focused on riding straight away, you know, like he could have done like another air or like another turn. Well, or if you, since you said that, and now I've watched it and they replay, that's him landed in control. Look yeah. at the wave. When you look at it now... Yes, it, it's it's open. It's open, fully open. He would have easy made it. Look, look how long it stays for. Yeah. So and he would have kept riding all the way down. So that that's why it was my only point. You know, like I thought it was yeah. like amazing. But if the wave wouldn't been that 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 open, you know, then it was. My, my feeling on it is that's a ten. Whatever he does after that, I don't give a shit <laughs> because that was the best move of the whole contest under oh, pressure great. on the first section, you know, there was so much going on, which if I look at surfing and I've seen, I know there's been a difference of judging in surfing, but I have seen them give straight tens for one maneuver in certain conditions. The reason yeah. I give it that is it's the only 360 I saw in the whole competition. Yeah. It was on a decent section. It was per like everything just adds to me as well. I'd want a 10 if I did that. Could he have done more? Hundred <laughs> percent. But then I would still give him a ten. You know, like and I've had this discussion before when I'm commentating. You know, yeah. a ten doesn't need to be because in wave sailing you can always do more. Well, you could have done that. You could have done that. You could have done that. You, there's always extra, but there's got to be a point where you're like, is that as good as we've seen? Yes, it's a ten. And then if someone else does something, it can also be a ten. You can have a couple of tens. You know, I, I like to see 10s because also media wise, if I put my media hat on, I want to go on social media and say, this was a 10. Bang. First 10 of the competition. Sickest move we saw, you know, and there's 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 something about that. Again, I, I can mm. see why people could argue the other way. But for me, I literally watched it. I shouted off my seat. I didn't do that for anything else. <laughs> I was like, ah! you know, my, my, my missus, Vilma was like, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> I, I, I've talked about the woo factor back in WA and I've always joked about it that that's how they judged. But actually, that was the woo factor. I was like, ah! <laughs> so for me, it's 10. Yep. Makes sense, Benny. What yeah. did he actually okay. end up getting for that wave? Uh, nine. nine. Nine something. Nine, yeah. nine point zero six, I think. Something mm. like that. Yeah. Just as a, I'm, I'm gonna move quickly. <laughs> which which is not still not a bad score. Have you got the have you got the rest of the ways from that uh, semi Benny? Yeah. Well, th th this is I'm gonna go through the semi, but there's I just cut out some highlights from the, some of the quarters because there was okay. on a couple of the heats they did a highlight package at the end. So I've just added them in for maybe people who didn't watch it. You can have a watch. Yeah. But I put into tune here with a couple of crashes because I thought he was pushing. It didn't work for him. But I do yeah. like to see that. Um, yeah. So this was um, Marino, uh, Philip Costa, Julian Salmon, Diego Fabres. This is just like the end sort of highlight reel they put at the end of the video. Again, they didn't do it on every heat, which was a bit frustrating. But when they did, it's kind of nice. This was two good turns from uh, Marino. Some of yep. the better turns. Yeah. Do. Oh, that was sick. Wow. Then he messed up the last one, which I do like it because he went for it. 
I mean, if yep. he'd have landed that, that would have been uh, terrible. He was still quite a lot of points for that, but two good turns, two of the best turns I thought I saw him do in the, in the whole competition. Mm. Yeah. Salmon, he, he looked like he needed it a bit bigger or, or something. He didn't quite have his have his normal thing. I thought he, he put a good show together, but, you know, he didn't quite... It didn't quite just fit for him. You know, sometimes it fits. Other times it just didn't quite happen. Yeah. Just Otherwise, it wasn't it unlucky. Yeah, it, it looked pretty hard, you know. Yeah. I think it's... Those early uh, rounds were just so different to the later yeah. rounds. Because yeah. always Matanzas, is, it's very special. It's like if you get it right at the beginning when the wind kicks in, it's kind of a little bit more side off. And it's fun for a while. And then suddenly it just turns side on and then messy, you know. And I think it, it just lined up at that moment when they had the heat. And then on top of that, the tide was weird. And I think that's why it was so difficult for them. I'm going to ask you, what do you think of this? This is Costa. Mm -hmm. What's your... Because I, I saw this and I know Costa. I, I think he's a great sailor. But what do you think of that score-wise? Because I thought... What did it get for I'm that? Being, I'm just interested because I critically wise we get to look at it on the video. Yeah. But if you see an air like this, it's pretty straight again. Yeah. And I think it's interesting because it, it's wave sailing isn't about always being critical. You've got to be functional. So if you need to get down the line, you have to use tools of riding a wave to get further down the line. And that type kind of straight air off the top does get you down the line with more speed. So it makes sense, you know. But then also the tack, because what I'm thinking is, which I'm going to come on to him in a bit, when you don't pull it perfectly, and I, I go, I relate back to a Kelly Slater moment. There was one heat somewhere where he did this move and he fell on his board and he was lying down. Then he kind of surfed back up, got on his board, and they gave him like a four. And everyone was losing their mind because they were like, yeah, but man, did you see the save? And you're like, and even Kelly at the end said, yeah, but I didn't mean to do it. It was like, it was a fail, and I yeah. saved it, which isn't as good as a perfect make. And then after hearing that and watching that, I do watch things a bit differently because my initial reaction, which will come on to one of Costa's uh, waves in a minute on the other uh, semi-final, I think it is. Could even be on the final. Um, but it, it's like he they had the rig down and he had to pull it up. You know, it's like a burnt Rodiger one in Japan as well. Yeah. I'm instantly, my emotions say, yeah, that was sick. That was, they saved it. Yeah, more points. But actually, if I look at the Kelly Slater incident and I judge it off what he said, I'm thinking maybe it doesn't score as many points. Yeah. You know, like, and, and again, that's a, it's, it's an interesting right. conversation, I think. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know. Emotional wise, I want to give it more points. This was yeah. Victor's early rounds in the smaller waves. And yeah. I thought, I, I think he looked good in that. I thought, if the finals had been in that, he would have been tricky to beat because he was very solid, very consistent. The, the good thing with Victor is that he's, as you say, he's just solid, you know, and he's very good at fabricating scores. The more you crack it up, the comes get the. You might, yeah, Hello? you just have to repeat that, Mark. You just broke up, mate. I think we've lost him. Hello. I think he was saying. Back? The, oh, you're back. Yeah, mate. Yeah. So you were just saying about yeah, Victor, and then you okay. cut out. No, he's gone again. Well, it was nice to have Mark for a, you know a couple of minutes. <laughs> wow, he's, uh, <laughs> he has left us to the land of. <laughs> Um, but we'll get him back, hopefully, in a bit. But, you know, when I watch these highlights like this, I realize, oh, is he back? He's back. Am I back? Yeah. No, oh, back, he's maybe. back. <laughs> yes, mate. We can hear you now. Yeah, you were just talking about Victor and then you cut out. Ah, uh, yeah. No, I was just saying the good thing about Victor is that he's very good at fabricating scores, you know. So I feel like the trickier the conditions get, the like the better he, he performs, you know. Just because he can make shit stuff look good, you know? Yeah. Even yeah. though sometimes it's not critical or whatever, but he will kind of go through moves smoothly and, and easily, you know? 
I mean, and, uh, he's super yeah. smooth, isn't he? He is. Yeah. He is like he is that one guy that if you make a slight mistake, he will beat you because he will oh. always put in a good score. He never puts in a terrible score. Always puts in a good score, and then obviously puts in massive scores as well. But he yeah. will always. Bottom line is, he will always perform to yeah. a to a, a high level. And then obviously sometimes he goes excellent, excellent, but all the time he is always performing. It's pretty mad actually the the level of consistency, and it's why he's won world titles. It's why he's he's so difficult to beat, you know. And uh, like I said, when we saw in the early rounds in these tricky smaller stuff where it was kind of bubbling up and everywhere, he was just every sort of wave. He seemed to have a scoring decent scoring wave, yeah. and uh, there wasn't many people doing that. I didn't get to see this heat, but uh, did Antoine Martin was it um, was it pretty clear that he was beaten by? Oh, he got smashed. Uh, Victor? Oh, okay, because those highlights there is uh, some good highlights uh, clips of Antoine. There, he, he was very know. aggressive, like, yeah. and I liked it. I was like, "Whoa, that was sick!" Oh, he went down hard. Oh, that was sick. Oh, he went down hard. It yeah, was like okay. if he'd have come off, he would have smashed the heat. He, yeah. Like for me, he, he would have killed it. But yeah. there's a very fine line well it's not a fine line it's like it's do or die you know that yeah. type of sailing which is the opposite of victor victor you know never went for anything that he thought he would crash whereas mm -hmm. it looked like anton went if i land this they're all <laughs> dead <laughs> and they're like, oh. so you know yeah, it's, yeah. it was a totally different style to victor i thought it was and uh, it was uh, antoine now that you say that antoine he had i think it was his first turn that he did he crashed it but it was so sick for me it was like by far one of the best turns of the event. you say that i actually it's see so that out as one of my highlights which i was showing earlier i put it at the beginning of the video because i remember watching yeah like, yes! yeah this like, was yeah that was sick Man, that, Look at that. That. you know that is going for broke on a serious section yeah. you, know, you know he's turned that board 180 degrees back into the wave it's pretty yeah. sick yeah, like I, I wish we would have seen more turns like that, man. That was Ooh. super. Cool. It was unfortunate that there was like so much foam in the in the wave coming down. Otherwise, you yeah. would have nailed it. For me, that turn alone mm, it was yeah. super high scoring already. Yeah, 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 agreed. yeah definitely. totally agreed. I, my my turns of the competition that I remember, I've got three in my head. That one from Antoine, which it didn't make. The one from Adam Varchol in a, one of the early rounds, it's just so sick. I should have found it out. And there was one from Salman on not his biggest scoring wave of the heat. It was near the end of the heat. One of his first turns just proper out and in. And I, those three turns really have stuck in my in my mind, which was pretty cool. Obviously, um, all those riders didn't make it through, <laughs> you know, which is, which is interesting. But there were some of my favorite turns and favorite styles. But again, this is competition. It's not all about letting it all hang out there. Sometimes you have to rein it in a little bit, you know. And again, it's very difficult because then you've got people like Morgan who everyone's kind of reined in and then he frosts that 360 and that just gives him this extra edge. And, and that's what you see with the top boys, Mark's one of them. When you get to those later stages, they've got the confidence, they've got the skills to be able to push that extra bit you know, and I think it's uh, it was it was super interesting to watch. Right, um, let's go on to the semi-finals. If I wow! Yay, yeah, the semis. Semi. Is this the semi one? Yeah. So Morgan Nero, Kamiju Ban, Marcelio Brown, obviously finished second in um, in Japan, and Alex Vargas, local boys. If you look at the scores before we watch this, I mean. Pretty clear cut, you know. Morgan Nero, 1753. Camille Juban, 17 points. You know, Marcelio Brown was three points behind, which is not easy to do. But when we watch this, you'll see he didn't really he didn't really get on his flow, I thought. He, he looked uh, a bit struggling. Alex Vargas, I think he definitely had moments, but it was you had to pick the waves. And the, and the the two boys at the top really had good wave selection in this. Juban already on the board with the six point one seven. Brazilian with the two. Here comes Vargas on the inside. This is a cool view, isn't it, of that first? Yeah. Vargas. Well, the waves are, you can see has picked up uh, the previous heats. Isn't it? You get a real good sense of how much you know throw, how much lip is on those waves when you see that view. 
How did you see this heat, Mark? Um, I mean, I think it was clear, no? Uh, just uh, Morgan yeah. destroyed it. Al he already started firing with that 360, you know. Um, he, he looked the most connected, I have to say. He, he was my favorite sailor of the contest, you know, like in that Fully last... down the line, Morgan Ooh. with the 360, does he land it? Oh. Into the pit. Morgan <laughs> with the 360 into the pit every time. Just wanted to put that on. Is it, is it the actual move you like or just Kai's commentary, Ben? I like it all because, and I, yeah. I, again, I'm a bit biased because I'm a commentator, but I think the commentary adds to that energy. It was you good. Know, it was good. You got to fucking do I loved, I loved how it did. it's like it just woke him up. It just it was so radical. It was cool. Yeah. But, it, you know, when you watched it real time, it, it was such a sick move because it's so vert, so high, right up into it, and then just landed. Per it was like, it was so good. I loved it. Just you by know, how far in front he landed, you can see the yeah. projection of the lip, like how, how powerful that the lip is in this spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, look, it looks so good. It's like, uh, yeah, this is. I mean, this is this is when it sort of went turbo size, and and Kami did just level up as soon as it got bigger. I thought in the earlier smaller stuff, I wasn't mm. so convinced with him. I was like, yeah, 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 mm, he might struggle a bit here. But soon as it went like this, it 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 was like he's a different sailor for me. Yeah, it, yeah. It just he just changes. And um, and he's you know some of the airs he does he just floats like he does yeah. one in a I don't know if it's in this one or in the final but he just goes yeah. <laughs> he's just floating in the air. He's so good at them, isn't he? What would you make of his high boom? I mean, he's got he, you know, and I'm pointing out that's a nice wave from Morgan there as well. Uh, but this was backing up his 360 Morgan. But you know, Camille's boom is not just a little bit high; it's really like, high, really high. Crazy! Oh, look at that thing. I mean, I'm, I'm way, way taller than him, and I probably wouldn't even use it there. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. You get, I guess, you get loads of lift. You get loads of lift, which makes mm. sense because his aerials, he's able to hang off it, which is yeah. why I feel like in that smaller stuff, it didn't feel like it was working as well. But in this stuff, it looked great. But, but I think probably you know it has to do. You know, with his weight and the kind of boards he rides too, you know, yeah. besides his style and his preference, I think it's got to do with that. You know, he yeah. has like this very short curvy board, so I, I'm I'm guessing it just helps him, you know, to get a little bit more power and stay a little bit more upright on the board and not uh, stall it as much. Yeah, that's what I'm that's guessing. True. Yeah. It, you know, that that's exactly what you what I yeah. thought. He he does use small boards, which. You know, with a low boom, maybe they don't go as well. When you get that high boom, you get a bit more lift, and yeah. he's able to put that board where he wants it. Yeah. You know, with that sort of high boom, there's less pressure going into exactly. he's able to flick it around. Yeah, I think I think so. It's that. Yeah, because you see yeah. Vargas, he's the, he's the opposite. Super low boom. Yeah. Like yeah. low boom really drives the board. You can see the board is just like in the water, like really. Yeah. <sighs> So it's a, it's a totally different style again, and I, I it's interesting. Gosh. Look at the size of these things. I know, it's solid, uh, isn't it? Yeah, but this, this is this is the one that I was talking about before. You know, the, here it was when it maxed out, and you can see it's just bending away of the point. It's not wrapping into it. Yeah, it's that, just that, a big wave. Yeah, you can see actually Morgan's one. You know, it, it's like the last one, and it has a little bit more bend to it, and yeah. you actually got a steeper. Section yeah, and, and like more, more drive and power. Yeah, look and at I this. really like, I really oh, like Morgan style. Yeah. Well, you said actually before we did all this, you were like when we were talking about who's. I was asking you who's your favorite riders, you, and you said Morgan. He said he looks looks good, making waves, good, looks good style, and I mean, pretty good call, I'd say. And again, this is. I mean, that's that was a pretty meaty aerial from Brazilio. Yeah, that was his best moment of that heat, I think. Yeah, and uh, I mean, Brow, he he sailed good. It's just that the other guys they were on better waves, and they just, you know, they were on fire. It's just well, he, he, that was the three sixty, you know. And Morgan yeah. knew he needed that extra something, and you know, yeah. that's the claim. That's the he knew he needed it. He went for it, landed it. Probably couldn't contain the emotions. Just like yeah. yes, you know, yeah. you're like, well, that's a massive score. You already yeah. know. Yeah. 
look at the sets. I mean, just mm. ridiculous, isn't it? Look at that way. That was that was really setting up. So, That's like, sick. this is what we want to see. I mean, this is why you guys, and I'll say you guys, because I'm obviously not that involved anymore, but you are pushing to get the tour to these type of locations, even if it means, you know, suffering a little bit more money you have to pay, you know, different standards of kind of – but now you're getting to showcase the talent mm. that you boys have been, you know, working on for years. You know, it's okay going to Pozo. It's great. Tenerife, great. Silk, great. But realistically, this, you saw the numbers yeah. last night, you know, two over 2,000 at one point. If you watch the WSL mm. at any one point, you know, for much, much, much bigger sport, it's not that crazy more viewers you know if you look at the size of windsurfing compared to the size of surfing mm. you got two thousand plus people watching at live plus mm, i'm watching cool. on the sofa with five other people four other people mm. you know there's a lot of people watching yeah. it's impressive oh, it's good it's very good yeah so well it yeah, looks that, like Chile will be a um, uh, it will be an event on the on the tour for probably quite a while now, I guess. Mark, this is uh, doesn't get much better than this, does it? I hope I hope it will stay for a, <clears throat> for a long while, and it's just gonna keep on growing. And, yeah, you know, everyone seems super happy, and from what I've seen, organization wise, and you know, live stream, everything was pretty good. You know, yeah, yeah, like did uh, an amazing job, and like the Chilean community, they are very. Yeah, helpful and, and involved, you know, uh, when it comes to helping with, with mm. stuff. And I think you, you could see it there. And uh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm actually very happy that it worked out so good. And I'm looking forward for next year. And hopefully I'm back to fitness again and uh, and I can compete there because. I yeah, man. Yeah, I'm sure. Definitely. I might, like I say, it was, it's, it's hard watching, I can imagine, for you, because that is your conditions as well. And you've been to Chile a bit, you know the spot. Yeah, I, we won't go on about it. Uh, we're going to come to the comments in a minute. We're just going to watch second semi-final, and then we're obviously going to the final. Second semi-final, Victor Fernandez, Philip Costa, obviously names we used to see in qualifying through these rounds, Marino Gill and Thomas Traversa. Right. As you can see... Tom Hart didn't really have one of his better heats. And if you watch the heat, which we're going to do now, he didn't look, it just didn't look like it was working. Like it was, it was hard. Again, I spoke to Mark about this. I'm sure he's going to give his thoughts in a minute, but we both pretty much said the same thing. It just seemed like it, it just wasn't working. Whatever it was, this style for that wave or his approach to that heat, it, it, it was kind of getting a bit stuck. And, and it's not what we used to see him from Tom. I, I really thought in those conditions we were going to see like fireworks, and it, it just didn't quite come off for him. What, what's your take on that, Mark? What's your you thinking? I mean, I'm trying I think to Thomas Traversa and Philip. Um, I think uh, he had seemed, you know, sometimes it just happens. You know, you have that heat that you are not in sync with the sets, and I think he struggled a little bit with that. He just, you know, uh, he was out of sync in that heat. And then I think uh, he has this very vertical and deep bottom turn, you know? Yeah. So he has, he's very deep in the bottom turn and has a super vertical approach, which I think it's, like, super critical. And and I felt as well, for example, in some previous heats, he got a bit underscored for, like, some very critical stuff that he did, yeah. even though he didn't get the length of right. But in this heat in particular, it seemed like uh, the waves were running away from him all the time, you know? He was, uh, I don't know, because at this point, you on the outside, you might be powered up, but then in the wave, you have no pressure. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you went back. Weird, but you, you're back. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. So, yeah, so in this spot, sometimes you're super powered up on, on, on the outside, but on the inside, there's no wind. So, you know, Tomah, he always uses smaller gear. So he probably that was working against him a little bit because then he didn't have as much pressure in the in the in the wave you know so i think then it, it made him struggle even more you know because maybe with his approach yeah. and the wave being so fast then he needed that extra pressure so i think yeah. it, you know it, it was just a combination of things but uh, yeah the, i think we saw that yeah yeah okay. oh no i just no, said you... it in that heat, you know, it just seems like uh, 
it didn't click for him. You know, we saw you know some amazing riding in uh, in previous hits, but in that hit, it just seemed. I tell you uh, what, sorry, just going back to this clip we're showing now. Look at look how far. Yeah. I know, that was... in this white water. Is it Victor or Toma? Victor, yeah. Yeah, in the white water. Goes down there. He's holding on, isn't he? And then he lets go eventually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just keeps That's going. Not... Yeah, he just keeps rolling through. Did this uh, heat yeah, had... Through. Go, Benny. Oh, I was going to say, this <laughs> heat had a moment, which I'm actually very curious for your guy's opinion and this i wonder if i can't remember there's a there was a costa wave is this is this it no sometimes it's hard to tell who it is with the goiter this is yeah when that comes up um we'll definitely have to discuss that so it's not this wave so anyway oh, yeah sorry. when that comes let me know because that was an interesting moment i thought god look at these sets rolling in yeah, you can you can see that. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, you can't, I can't stop. Yeah, and I feel like that was not the like maybe the wave he should have been on. Maybe he should have waited for like one of the ones at the back, you know. But it's so hard. You need like this spot. It's very complicated to read because you need to understand you have the island out the back, so it's not like you can read a swell line coming in clearly. So you need mm. to understand that sometimes it, you can see it coming on the left side, but then, you know, sometimes it doesn't wrap around to the right side, which is the section that helps it to connect and kind of line up completely. So it's, uh, yeah, it's very tricky. And uh, I guess when there's so much water moving, it's, it gets even harder because you're just going like up and down like that. So. Yeah. Uh, it, look, it looked tricky, but I think what you said about Tom is like his approach was very vertical, very radical. Yeah. Sometimes it counted against him because then you weren't getting that full sort of, and especially as I think it went a bit, you know, the, the wave got bigger. I think you had to do a bit of racing yeah, every so often and keep it pretty clean. Oh. And then there'll be a few moments within the wave where you could maybe unleash. I mean, look at the waves. Though. I mean, it really, it, it, was, it, it was God, pretty. It's heavy, it? Look at that. Um, on a day like uh, this, that was the that was the Costa hit. So this is what I'm interested. In. We'll speak about this in a minute. So that was a sick wave. I think if he'd have and he did land the last section, like this yeah. is it. So he's already had a solid wave until now, um, and then the last section he gets super nice deep bottom turn. Like he gets a bit wobbly there, <laughs> and then yeah. as he comes down, this last hit. It's like drops it. That looks sick. And then this, but then he's saving it. So how long does he save it for? And then that's my question. Again, yeah. I've, I've got no real opinion on this. It's just interesting. Yeah. How many points do you lose for saving and not making yeah. it clean, even though I like it? Like my my yeah. initial reaction is I like it. I don't yeah. know. I, mean, I, I think the main thing you have to look at is like, like was the bottom – and top turn approach was it radical and i think yes yeah. like he did a deep bottom turn and he went like straight into a, a maasai bowly section and he fucking killed it yeah but uh but you know he got the points there you know yes and, and then he struggled with it for a while so it was not he didn't ride out clean so then of course i think you need to deduct some points but i don't think um it outweighs the yeah, radical. Yeah, exactly. Because I think the damage was done already, you know, and, yeah. and he saved it. So that's that's the whole point, you know. It's not like he, you know, like, for example, he rolled around in the sail and then he re reappeared in the yeah. white water or, I don't know, something weird. You know, I think, he, just listen yeah. to explain it then, it's good, because you basically say that if they go half radical but land clean, that, because it's so radical and so late, that outweighs the other stuff, even though the landing isn't clean, because the 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 chance of messing it up is way greater when you go more radical. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. I agree. You know, I agree. And I think that's what my overriding emotion is telling me. You're like, wow, that was radical. Oh, we <laughs> saved it. You know, like that's the two emotions you get. Well, I do anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it was definitely a wow moment. You know, like when I saw, it, I was like, oh, he's gonna hit it. Yeah. I thought he was going to do an air, you know, and I think it was more difficult what he what he did than doing an air. 
like 100% because he came down with the lip, you know? So to me, that was very radical. I think that's important to tell guys at home. I'm not, I'm not, you know, condescending everyone at home, but you know, when you wave sell at this level, sometimes an air is easier because you're airing over some of the gnarliest section and landing in a clean section. Yes, there's skill involved to do that, but when you do a turn, you are messing with the nastiest, craziest, unpredictable part of the wave, yeah. you know, and and that is harder. And it, it, sometimes an air gets way more credit. Again, it's a functional move as well, an air. Sometimes you think, well, I'm not going to make it back that section. If I do a radical turn here, I'm not going to make the next section. So the, the air becomes functional because it gets you clean of that section, keeps your speed, and it keeps you going. And then you're choosing something else. So I know what a lot of the top boys, they don't like to see a lot of straight airs on a wave because you're missing a lot of it. it you can use it, but don't overuse it. And, yeah. and, and I think that's what sometimes a message to some of the judges is it's like, you know, sometimes it's the only thing you can do. I saw in Cape Verde, it was like, well, you couldn't do a turn, otherwise you'd end yeah. up on the rocks. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of straight airs or nothing. Yeah. But, you know, the, there's been easy examples, you know, in this contest, you, you know, you mentioned Cal Verde now. I saw it in, in Cape Verde too, like in the event they had some years back. And, you know, like Victor, he did like some sick turns, like, of course, like a shorter ride. But he went yeah. like fully vertical, destroyed it. And then you could just see some other guys just like chop hopping the, down the line all the way down to Santa Maria. You know, and what Victor did for me was like way harder than uh, than chop hopping that down the line, you know, when it's yeah. straight off or like that. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it happened the same in this contest. Like for me, I saw too many straight airs and they were in a way rewarded too much. You mm -hmm. know, some of them, like if you come right underneath, but, um, yeah. the highline, I think Danny as mm -hmm. Yeah, you broke up a little bit there, but I think I I got the gist. You want to see um, him come up and under it rather than Hello. Hey, yo, Maki. Oi, Benny, have we missed the talking point that I was wanting to talk about that was um, Costa's goiter? Has that, is it that in this? It the replay at the end, I'm guessing. Oh, okay, because that was. I think it's well, in the final. Was... It could be in the final. You would have seen oh, it. It's pretty obvious. Yeah, it was in the final. The one that he, the one that he missed. The yep. one he came down, he did it on the way up on and then oh the okay i got confused i thought it was in this seat okay cool because yeah it's something i want to uh, chat about it was interesting okay i think it was in the final. yeah it was, it was in the final in fact yeah. yeah because this is that turn i think oh no that was the end section <laughs> look at that <laughs> explosion so, so that, was a so that 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 You go, Mark. No, no, I just said that that was a pretty sick uh, finishing move. You know, I, yeah, I know. and this is, that turn. This, so is this, that is, this is this is this is a, this is a, that's a seven six seven round. Yeah. You know, so basically, think... all, all those points have just come from that hit because he didn't really do any on this no, way. Uh, uh, there was yeah. a few before. I I think it was uh, I think the points come basically from picking up a good set wave. And then mm -hmm. the first turn I think was good, and then he the second one was more like a check turn, and the third one the same, and then I mm -hmm. think all the points were in the last hit. Yeah, yeah. So for me, like that last hit, you know, it's it was definitely where all the damage was done. Hmm. Yeah, it was, that was a solid good. hit. Yeah. No, it was cool. Fair enough. So that was semi final number two. Oh, and I've got the final, haven't I, Benny? That's I'm right. Sorry, it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. I was waiting. I was waiting for you, and I realized I've got it. Uh, okay, let's bring it up. I had a few yeah. technical issues earlier. Yeah. yeah, it's not, not always straightforward, is it, uh, doing all this? Okay. so Are we, we going to come to the comments in a bit? Because I know there's a lot of people asking about gear. Obviously, we weren't there, so I don't know exactly, but I did hear certain people on certain sizes. I heard anything between, you know, Kami on a 4.3, was it? 
three, did he say something like that? And then I think four, seven, you know, that kind of range. It was that middle range, maybe the bigger guys. It looked like it got windier towards the end, so, but yeah. wouldn't surprise me if people on five O's, some of the big, big boys. But Victor um, was on five O because five, I, five. Uh, yeah, I heard in an interview mm. that uh, he said he was on a four, seven, and then he, it was when he ate shit, when he got munched in the, well, mm. by that sideways wave, and then, um, and then he changed to five O. Okay. And he said that he, he was overpowered, but that it helped him a lot. I, I got the impression you needed to sail overpowered, like yeah. uncomfortably so. So, but you needed that juice on the inside and to make those little bits of extra bit. Yeah. But then some of the first bits, you were mega overpowered. Yeah. Okay, so final. Morgan Nero, Victor Fernandez, Camille Ban, and Philip Costa. I mean, you can't fault the Camille Ban. He just turns up, doesn't he? He literally just turns up. A lower classic wins it. You know, Cam, uh, you know, Cape Verde back from the dead. You know, to come all the way back through here, like starboard tack, port tack. When it's wave riding only, this guy it's hard to not put a bet on him. Yeah. Wave? And his yeah. wave selection was just insane. Yeah, I just think he is very. He has a very good reading of the of the waves, you know. And uh, he's been windsurfing and surfing a lot since he was uh, very young. So, and he's super talented. On top of that, yeah, so I think um, he just ha has an exceptional read of the waves. Yeah, incredible. In fact, if it's Philip would have nailed that one. <laughs> I was scared for a couple of times, you know, because he had the Liz Frank injury too. And now like me having mm. it and see his feet getting stuck in the strap a couple mm. of times. I was like, oh no, don't hurt it again, please. I saw a few people actually and I thought, oh my God, if your foot was still in, oh my life. Crazy. It's quite a long um, long period between the waves, isn't it? It's uh, such a sick day. Um, like I said, watching this final, we'll come to the comments in a minute. So if you have got questions, hit them out and we'll run through them. Obviously, this isn't going to be the quick 20 minutes. We're already at an hour and 20. <laughs> oh, how's that? And he say, I thought he'd gone down there. That's Camille all over. Most people, I, that I, gets away from them. Does Camille ever not make an aerial? I don't think I've ever seen him crash one. He just, I've seen still it. The only one I've seen him crash, he hurt his ribs. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Well, Morgan as well. His his wave really oh, so good, yeah. isn't it? And wave it's selection. Amazing. So I'm amazing. actually so... very happy for Morgan because he's been putting the work in, you know. And for me, mm. that's yeah. That that's that, that's who deserves the, you know, to to the to the good and and the reward, you know, the people that put yeah, the work in. And Morgan, sure. I feel like he's done more than than others. So I'm very yeah, happy okay. for. And, and he isn't the first name you think of, is he? But he should be. Mm. When you look at what he's done, back-to-back, -back, I think, a lower classic Three challenge. times, isn't it? You know, he's been up there in so many events. He's pushing. But he's, he's still not a name people come out with. Like, he's now, I think, leading the world tour, if I, my maths is correct. I think he should be, yeah. Yeah. So it's well, pretty mad, isn't it? Pretty cool. Yeah. And I always remember Morgan. I don't know if anyone else remembers. When I first went to Maui, he was this really uh, young kid and he always used to wear sunglasses. And he th that's how I remember him because it, you know, I've never seen anyone. And he used to be normal sunglasses. They look they look like uh, Men in Black style or something. <laughs> <laughs> but I always remember going, there's a dude in the sunglasses. Like, but, um, yeah. That's what, back when he was on North, which is a long, long time ago, I guess. Was he on North? All right, this is the wave I wanted to ask you guys. I want you to tell me what you think this wave ride deserves as a score. Okay. Have we seen the beginning? This is it. This is the beginning. Decent Turn time. one. Well, I think that was uh, the beginning. Well, if that's the beginning. Well, I'm pretty sure it was the beginning. If I go back... I mean, maybe you the camera. 
misses. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's if, it, if it, you go back yeah. to the beginning, I think there's stuff before that. If, if yeah. it's a big score, if that's what you're saying. No, because, yeah, because look, well, what happens is it edits in to this point, so we don't actually know if there's something before. So I guess, yeah, maybe it is a bit hard to then make a judgment call because all you see in the live stream is this one turn, yeah, and and a um and the crash. failed, yeah, and a crash, and I yeah, but he got a uh, pretty high score for it. So he, I guess, okay. Bill Bill Short says no, there were more turns before that. Uh, Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that makes sense then because all I saw was one turn and that, and then the score was, I don't know, seven. Was it eight or seven, was seven. it? Yeah. Okay. And I thought, is that overscored or, yeah. but obviously we didn't get to see the first. Okay. Fair enough. Well, that clears that up. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, we got we got uh, five nine nine euros from Bart. Ooh, Bart. <laughs> Thanks, Good on Bart. you, Bart. Thanks, mate. Legend. I'll get the beers in. <laughs> it's a bit early for beers, actually. You're going to have to spend it in Defi win, Benjamin. Yeah, okay. I'll be splashing them out. Maybe I'll get you a <laughs> coffee <laughs> The goiter. Oh, God's amazing. I mean, it was ripping. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is a guy who I saw learn the goiter in Peru right. last year. Like he literally yeah. said, I'm staying on to work on the goiter or moves or whatever. And then you it watch worked. that video of <laughs> it, landing them and landing them. And you're like, well, you've got that sorted. And then <laughs> in the competition, but also, as I said earlier, it wasn't the finishing move. It was early on in the wave. So you're risking losing the wave, which is always going to give you more points. You know, if you if you do your move early and then you back it up because there's a, you know when you see Costa's one, he tries it at the end of the wave, but he's already got the score. Yeah. Sometimes that should count more against you because you, you're not really risking it. But when you're like doing off the first section, or even worse, is the mid section. You do one sick turn and then you go for it because then you're risking losing that good turn and that whole wave. And that's where really the big points should come from because there's much more risk, much more on the line. Yeah. But high scores. At this, at this point in the heat, there was only 1.3 separating sad. first from uh, fourth. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. I, w I wonder what Victor did with the uh, 8 to 3 because I didn't. Like I didn't see it in the live stream where it was. Yes, I would imagine if we know Victor, we can probably just sort of pick it out. It was probably just a sick size Third. way, long yeah. turns. Because there was a point where I was like, I would not want to be a judge now. I think it was in the final. There was yeah. three guys or four guys racked up yeah. and they were all doing turns, all moving at the same time. I was like, how? Yeah. And I judged in lighter, smaller conditions, but in a yeah. similar setup where everyone's on a wave, it's impossible. It's yeah. like you can't keep no. your eyes on everyone. Yeah. It's, it's and, I, yeah. And, I, and I think I mentioned that to you, Ben. Like, it's it's interesting to see it from the screen because it, you don't, it, it's just flat. So, like, the wall, the wall factor is not there because you're not seeing it live or it's much mm. smaller. You know? mm. So, I, I actually did, like, try to score some of the waves myself from home. And there was a couple that uh, was like pretty much the same, and then some others, like uh, I would have given less. But you know, maybe it's just me being critical from the screen, from the from the sofa. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Did, but, you, did uh, you get uh, anything different in terms of result? Uh, no, this no. is a big aerial. Ooh. Not in not in terms of, of result, no. You yeah. know, as I said, because I that's why I was wondering, I, I wonder what Victor did on that eight to three, because that one I didn't score, you know, so I was wondering because then maybe Philip and Victor would have shifted. I have no clue, you know, okay. so that's why I would have been interested to, you know, but uh, as well at the same time, we missed the like you couldn't see the first part of uh, that wave from Philip where he does the goiter. Yeah, so I have no clue. Oh, that that would have been nice. Been yeah, I would have loved him to have got that 360. Yeah. That would have made things way more interesting, even even yeah. more than what they were. Yeah, no, 100%. Oh, that, that was the one that scared me. <laughs> <laughs> his, his, yeah. one, his, foot, his foot got uh, stuck in the foot strap, didn't it? And, and it was the one he heard. Like, uh, oh, 
Yeah. Like last time, the one he got surgery on. That's an explosion. That's like a mast and a half high, you know, explosion. Do you have to be extra careful once you've had the injury? Is it, or does it sort of heal to its, how it was? I mean, you know, like, do you have to hold back at all after a Liz Frank or is it, you know, it's, it's okay. Benjamin? Uh, I was like, Huh? We actually were talking about this yesterday. Like for me, yeah. it's more a mental thing. Like, yeah, I'll okay. be honest. Once it's healed, in theory, if it's all healed good and there's no problems, it should be totally fine. But yeah. mentally, it's very yeah, hard yeah. to get the trust back because yeah. sometimes yeah. when you do it, it happens very easily, and, and and you're like, well, fuck, that could happen any point. <laughs> so then you're like, oh. So it's more like you don't want to be injured again because it, it's that's the hardest thing psychologically being injured. It's not so much yeah. you don't come back to full speed. It's just mentally. It's yeah. it's another thing in your brain like that it has a there's a like a block on certain things. So the good guys are the ones who can just get over it mentally. I think that's the that's the big trick. The the physical side is is quite relatively easy. You do the training. You've got. A, program you work through it you strap it up blah, blah. but the mental game is 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 the big one you know yeah because that they, makes sense Swifty is a classic example did his liz frank did all the rehab and then broke it again because it didn't heal right and then mentally Ooh. that's like six months nearly a year out and then he had to get mm. it fused and anyway a whole different story but that is you know he's got both feet as far as i know fused so there's no mid joint in the foot it's just solid which mm. uh, yeah Again, he didn't want to risk it. Yeah. And it's just going back to this um, topic on the judging, as Mark said, maybe it's a bit hard to make a call when you're not there. But I think all in all, we could probably be all agreeing that the, the winners were all deserved. You know, there wasn't really anything where we sort of thought, oh, that's just way off, wasn't it? It was all pretty good. Yeah, I thought. I, in, I, think, know, generally. I think finals wise, I got no complaints at all. I thought everyone. Hmm. I didn't I really, you know, and there's always usually a bit not controversy. I hate using yeah. that word. But there's always a bit of subjectiveness where you might think that that style is better than others. And again, we've talked about it before. You know, just because you think it or your personal taste is that doesn't mean it's right. But we can all have different opinions on what we like mm. and what we think and why. And I think if you can put arguments to it, it's just an interesting conversation. You know, mm -hmm. if the judges then have a different view. We don't have to agree with them, but as sailors, if the majority of sailors think something and they're out there doing it, then I think the judges have to listen. You know, I, if at yeah. the end of this competition, there's like, let's say, a review because it's it's healthy to do it, uh, healthy to have like, what did you guys think of the judge in this competition? We want to learn from it. Did you think that this was right? And then people have their opinions, and I think that's a healthy discussion to have. I think. Sorry. Right. My laptop wasn't plugged in and it almost fell out of battery. <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah, because I was also thinking, you know, they had the luxury of having the replays from the live stream and uh, because if they didn't have a live stream to work with or any video footage, it would have been really hard because some of those sets coming through, all, you know, four sailors on a set with a lot of action going on and that's when it becomes really hard, doesn't it? You know, trying to judge it all. So there's, two, there's, a, lot, there's a lot going on. <laughs> It's tricky. Right. Um, we've been through those. We The competition is still not finished. They've still got masters and all this sort of stuff to do. So that is still going. But I think we already can confirm it's been a great success. And definitely from a spect spectator's point of view, I think it's worked um, super well. Yeah, that was the... Uh, the end bit. And I think there's a lot of relief people there. Local organizers put a lot of effort in, obviously IWT, a lot, of, you know, sailors have, you know, took a risk going over there because you never know if you're going to score. It's a lot of money, but I can definitely get a feeling that everyone is super happy. Um, just going into the comments, uh, JL7, why do you want to reward risk? Shouldn't it be difficulty, execution and aesthetics? Sometimes that would include risk, as in Morgan's case, where he could uh, go into a turn. Well, the risk, I'm, when I talk about risk, I'm talking about you are doing something that is extremely hard. Because if it's extremely hard, the risk is, is, is higher. So if you're doing something extremely hard, 
then that's what you're rewarding. You're not rewarding the, the risk, let's say, but it is a risk because it's harder. You know, if it's easier and you don't turn as hard or you put less pressure on your rail or you don't turn in a more critical part of the wave, there's less risk involved because there's less consequences. If you don't make the turn, it's in a softer part of the wave, there's less risk, there's less consequence. There's, you know, those things are what counting. Does that make sense? Is that, I've said that right? But that's, that's, that's why I see risk. The risk is, are you doing something extremely difficult or hard that has big consequences? If you make that, it's got to be rewarded because it's harder. Yeah. And I think sometimes it's hard to, to appreciate it, and especially with these people not not like for surfing that they can take their time and like go through the replays through different angles and stuff and that's a problem we we face with windsurfing you know everything happens very fast we don't have uh, as many judges we don't have the replays in different angles so i think um, yeah sometimes it's hard you know because if you look at it in slow motion and from certain angle you might see how critical something is you know and sometimes yeah. you know we, we just don't have this uh, resources Wait. totally, totally. Yeah. well i've just seen one of the main man's men 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 men's men <laughs> main men yeah. of the moment who was like a late addition to this competition and i think definitely a worthy addition because we have the main man kai catcher dorian over in chile <laughs> is going to join us who brought us moments like that morgan 360 <laughs> <laughs> at that point yeah. i've already lost where i put it so i would play it right now should we play it <laughs> Is he coming on? Can we bring him on? Yeah, bring him on. Bring him on. The man himself, Kai Kachadorian. Hit for Brasinho as oh, Morgan wait. takes aim. Oh, oh sorry. You're gonna... 360, does he land it? Oh. He gets into the pit. Morgan oh. Waro with the 360 into the pit and Matanzas waiting for the perfect moment to strike. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Trying to wake me up here or what? <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Kai? Feeling? How's your voice today? Uh, well, yes, it's a good thing I don't drink. I wouldn't be up right now. Uh, um, place give us the gossip. What happened last night? Anybody well, get loose? I was just bumping <laughs> grinding there by the bar. Um, <laughs> let me tell you, it was uh, it was a great way to finish things off. I don't really want to know what Jules Danelle looks like right now. <laughs> we, <laughs> Like, we all imagine if you've ever met you. Talk, talk about Rocky Balboa. I mean, this was like the Adrian Wall, just totally sketchy man hugs going down and just yeah. everything. How many times did he kiss you? Uh, he, 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 so that's what he does, huh? I, I was just like getting private of that after one kept on the peak, and I was like, oh, that's nice. Then he just kept coming up, and it was just like, no, dude. But my my uh, my defense. That was, I was like, you know, the French soccer team. I was like, allez bleu, allez bleu. And then I just run away from him. <laughs> yeah, if you ever want to get kissed right. by a drunken man, definitely like the deafy wind or somewhere where <laughs> Jules is, because you will get some good kisses. <laughs> and some I, I guess it's kind of reassuring that it just wasn't me and this is what he does, right? Yeah, oh he's a lover, God. not a fighter, that's for sure. Anyway, <laughs> here's boys. I'm um, jumping yeah. in a little early. They set the clocks back. But, um, you know, hearing the call on the 360, uh, it was an appropriate, you know, loss of mind. I mean, that was the Mark Angulo under the lip throw into the pit. And any angle you have of it doesn't do justice to what that really looked like when he slingshotted. Because he looked like he was way too deep. And I'm just kind of going, Morgan, no. It's early in the heat. No, no. And then just, Morgan, yes. <laughs> and just planted the thing and when he landed it was such uh, an epiphany because i was at hokipa in 90 when mark angulo pulled the first ever one in competition right in dave kalama's face and it was the same kind of one it was a, it was a mirror image on the other tack super yeah. similar one it, it I've was seen cool you do see. those mark i've seen you do those mark right under the lip and thrown and I mean, for a one move wave, which, it, you know, he had a couple of little trim turns in it and, you know, at the end, but I mean, through the claim in the air and right then I realized, man, this event is a true classic. And mm -hmm. I don't know if you noticed, but how were the conditions rising to the occasion right for the semis, uh, that first uh, woman's semi, the whole place just went 
boom and turned on it was, it was like, mad wasn't it like i know you're in the commentary but obviously we're watching at home it was literally like the beginning of that heat someone just went right let's fucking raise the waves a little bit here and it just went boom. and i mean like you know like give her credit soul did greek at 14 but all of a sudden you know <laughs> she's on this just giant wave and you're like whoa yeah and then lena erpenstein and then so on and so on that that he really started started this rally which was yeah. just monumental um you know the exchanges and um i heard you guys talking judging when i when i jumped in and you know like saul just you know got wave after wave after wave after wave kind of repeating her line on it so to speak being like just a wave catching machine and yeah. you could see that Bujma wasn't budging on the judging calls, like six, 6.1, yeah. 5.9, 6.2, you know, kind of a, kind of a sense of trust already with uh, head judge Bujma Giol, who's just obviously got the respect of the entire sailing body. Having been a competitor himself, not, you know, just in touch with the whole thing and kind of been one of those competitors that had also seen situations and things not go his way you yeah. know, a lot. He had been a guy who'd kind of had some tough calls in his career. And uh, so you could see that he he has the helm of this judging thing, not with like guilt, no, but he's taking his own sweet time to get these calls right. And it was it was a little bit hard. I, I called Alexia Kiefer Quintana the winner of the women, you know, as the heat was over, but the heat wasn't over. I didn't, you know, <laughs> go overboard with it. And at least it wasn't like, in the middle of the next heat but that was I mean, that, it definitely happens that but i think it's interesting you say that about bougemar because when i talk to him about the judging thing he's like you know you get such a different look when you're in that judging tower compared oh. to when you're a sailor it is yeah. eye-opening and I, i've said it a million times before in the stream but if every sailor had at least a couple of heats to judge and they have to go and judge you would understand everything way better because it is a whole different perspective. You think mm. there's stuff going on, you know, some writers like, oh, they're all plotting against me. It doesn't happen like that. It's hectic. It's full on. It's your concentration. Not everyone is meant to be a judge. I am not meant to be a judge. I overthink. I, you know, it, there's a certain type of brain and person who is a good judge. I don't think I'm a good judge. I know what I like, but I don't think I'm a good judge. I would hate I it. Too much pressure. I'm being like, Bad judge necessarily, Ben. It's that I think you and I are really passionate people. Who, you know, I, I know myself that uh, it would either be a, a thing of getting carried away completely in the moment. And you saw in the past that there was immense the rating getting kind of judged based on the moment. There were a few heats in this contest as well, which you know there are a few buzzer beaters in the challengers where you're like, well, mm, but you know, by the razor thin margin, another. About the judging which i'm hearing you know a lot of feedback about are some of these margins in the scale so to speak like you see all these super tight heats and the score yeah. is it's gonna be tight I, we're gonna have they're gonna have people's opinions they're gonna be different on certain things that's kind of normal but i think on a whole i think for me watching there's a few calls that i might disagree with personally but on a whole, I thought it was super good. And we, you, you always get it. Look at WSL. There's millions in that thing. And, the, and you look at the comments, everyone disagrees with every wave. It's like, you're never going to, no one's ever going to agree. There's so many things at play. There's so many things like conditions, moments, you know, a long heat, 27 minute heat. How the hell do you remember the first wave? to the, the the last wave you know and especially after judging six heats in a row you're like oh it's it's a it's not an easy job that's for sure but i think they did a, a i think they did a good job i think a lot of that credit goes to bujma who uh immediately knew that you know you know no offense to the judges but i i feel like you know in the past and that's you know i'm a traveling crew of professional judges that you know go with the tour which is kind of a dynamic that's an interesting one. So they kind of bond in with the sailors and you can tell that they get used to what the riders are doing. And maybe there is something on the other end of that scale where it's a little bit too sterilized judging wise. This was a, this was a, you know, a local crew for the most part. And uh, Bujma, you know, came right in and identified with the fact that he had to clearly communicate, you know, what the objective was, but also, you know, to your point, Matanzas, 
you know, at the machine level it was, you know, you saw Brasinho who's starting to go super pick and choose, getting left out of some exchanges. But the point is that like Matanzas is deciding this a lot too, uh, in a way. And I think that the interpretation about the wave being caught and how it's being ridden is being managed pretty well because there was Coster, you know, making the final on the basis of that late talk on a little wave that wasn't necessarily yeah. this high scoring wave, but he got this fairly. And uh, it took it took a while for that to settle in for Bujma. But when you saw the scores take a really long time. Yeah, I think some people, you know, feel like, okay, this is annoying. It's taking too long. And I was just like, finally, we're not, you know, trying to process this in an in anything but a completely objective manner, which is something that's totally subjective. And uh, I, I do feel like he got it right. I can't think of a single decision that was actually just straight up wrong. And I can't say this thing for the WSL right now is going through a judging nightmare. Yeah. Like I said, judging will always be, yes. you know, people have got different opinions, got different favorites, got different styles of life. So it's always going to be like that. But I've got one question to ask you. Have you been sailing yet? Um, well, you know, like you were, you were alluding to, there was a little bit of a late call here. Um, yeah. I, you know, nature of my uh, involvement here led to me leaving California without my gear, including surfboards that I'd gotten from stretch. They were Ooh. just like for here. And I went to Finland, you know, kind of like reset button. I was thinking Cabo Verde all the way. And then I got the call. I'm like, uh, uh, okay. And so I, I kind of had to get in, uh, crazy invented with my ticketing. And I'm on a one-way ticket here that was like Helsinki, Madrid, Santiago, San Francisco. <laughs> I so I'll get my gear. Um, but I've got nothing here, but we've got a Lessy bro here. Yes. Mm. So I am on. Um, the, doing the Masters, I'm, I'm, I'm a little torn. It's it's smaller gear and uh, there's 85. other. Eighty-five. What's he bought? Eighty-five is his big one. He's got an eighty-five, and we'll see about my my master's bid here because Bat's kind of been you know giving me the wink as well as other people. Uh, there's a lot of people who are going to be sailing elsewhere today. I've been at Matanzas all week long, <laughs> but let me take you out to the conditions because this is another compelling factor here. I was I was, was going to say, Kai, that looks like a pretty uh, nice place you uh, you're staying in. Or where is that? Um, the dream. I'm at the Kiter Hotel. <laughs> Ooh, uh, get out of there. Yeah, well, they ended up here. I'm not at the Suarzale, but uh, <laughs> you can see the beach. They have me at the Kiter place. You know, it's kind of mingling with the Kiters last night, too. But, Is it big? Uh, there's, still, there's still some surf. We're somehow in the fog here. And uh, you can see it's definitely still activated. Mark, you're really familiar with Matanzas. And, like... This place changes a lot quite quickly, right? You know, it just comes and goes. And um, it's a tide-related thing as well. But um, if I can do what I call the duo fecta, surf and sail in the same day, same sessions, that's really going to be, you know, something I, I haven't decided. I would like to get in the water. It's going to happen. And uh, for sure that you know, we still I'm, – I'm still here for like four or five days. Okay. I mean, well, we, I the master should start today. That's the plan, isn't it? Yeah, that is the plan. Um, you know, the wind and the forecast in general here. And Mark, I want to quiz you on this since you've spent so much time here. That the forecast bumps up and down. It changes a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, and, it, and it's been doing that more over the last years. That, <laughs> you just wake up. And, oh, then. Yeah, I mean, I think. Yeah, you can do you can do something every day, you know. So you can go surfing or windsurfing, and yeah, I mean, I've had days where it was very light, and I ended up sailing like in weird spots that I didn't think I was going to be sailing. We went there for surfing, and we ended up sailing, you know. It's like in between uh, Topo and uh, and Portecillo. I don't know if you know that spot thing, and that's why this this place really appeals to me in particular. It's right up there with Cabo Verde in terms of you're going to get the combination of windsurfing and surfing. Yeah. And you, know, you definitely see, uh, well, with Matanzas, I didn't really realize that it wasn't like the spot that everybody always goes without naming other names. But well, wouldn't you agree yesterday, and this is what Swifty was saying too, is that yesterday turned into one of those days where you would have been at Matanzas. Besides yeah. the ways there were people yeah. going, oh, who said it started blowing 40 knots. It was like unsailably windy. Yeah. 
Eh, that's that's you know hard to fathom for me, but I, I guess I'll just absorb that lesson because I haven't been there. Like I'm saying, I haven't been anywhere but here. I pulled out of Santiago straight to here, and I'm just <laughs> You've been stuck on that balcony commentating since. Well, yeah, I mean, that was the other thing is that um, I'm not sure if that's the plan moving forward. It's a good plan in terms of me being the commentator because they kept me far away from the judges. Mm. And uh, yeah. that you know, wasn't, I don't know if it was by design, but, you know, I'm like, they're kind of cozy, uh, chilling with that, that woman, Caro, who helped me on the call, who was a local. Mm. Yeah, that worked out perfect, I thought. Perfect. Yeah. Good. Um, Go ahead. I don't mean to speed this up, but I've got to go because uh, the wind is starting to. Uh, my half an hour of window is 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 run out. But <laughs> I would want to get you back on if you're doing the Masters, Kai. I think we should definitely do some stuff. I'm going to keep my eye on what's happening over the competition. Uh, but I just want to say, good job, man. I thought it was really good. I watched mm. pretty much. Well, I watched every day, and I've gone through the footage, and it's uh, it's been a great success. And I'm glad you made it over there because. After Japan, I won't lie, I was a little bit worried because, you know, it's nice to hear. Obviously, I'm English speaking, the English commentator and uh, someone who's got their enthusiasm for those Morgan Nero moments. Um, <laughs> like that. Uh, that, that should be doing the rounds. I don't know if it's online yet, but that should definitely be doing the rounds. So uh, good job for bringing it uh, to us. I've been, thoroughly enjoyed it and I'm sure we're going to see some more action coming up. I really appreciate it. Ben, uh, wait till you hear me turn into Miss Piggy on Camille's big. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I, I don't want to get. I did actually hear that. <laughs> uh, this is how I hit that register. I'll never know, but it was like Adele coming. It was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. hey, you can hit a high note. It happened in Fiji on Antoine. And I think I'm kind of like. I, I don't have control over it, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. But thanks for that. Um, enjoy your last days. Again, we're going to catch up for sure. Um, but I think that's it for this podcast. Mark Paré, thanks for joining. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Mark, I just wanted to say hi. I haven't talked to you since. Feel it, buddy. We were thinking about you here. And uh, oh. back to you soon. Get that thing healed up properly. Paul, great to see you, Ben. Respect yeah, you too, Kai. And keep in touch, boys. We'll be back. Do. Well done. Well done, everybody. See you guys. Bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 of the week then again sit back relax we got the brain of Ben no need to stress in the house is Van Bellen the game is went surf and you can't yell them or tell them we get the news the views the win biz the brand's gear tips plus the world's best quiz the cops PWA we're professionals without the pay there's nothing in pole dancing that we won't chat from tandem boards to a windsurfing cat it's your one stop shop for laughing listen tune in each week or you'll be doing the missing